Howdy, everybody. Welcome to the show. Uh, another edition of That's Railroading, <laughs> where, where we bring the railroad to you. <laughs> and we love doing it, too. i got a really big show. It's going to be exciting. I'm going to talk to you today about uh, TDDs, transverse defects, okay, in the rail and what we found. I hope you watched the last video where I uh, showed you a 30% growth in uh, of a transverse fissure in the rail head. And uh, I'll show you that picture again here in just a few when I get turned around. Okay, and uh, in the last video, I showed you how to mark the rail. Today, we're going to show you, uh, give you a little history or a little bit of information about the ultrasonic rail testing. And also, we're going to show you what an ultrasonic rail testing report actually looks like and explain what a TDD is. All right. So here's the picture of the 30% defect that was in the last video. And there's a link in the description of this video if you haven't watched that video go back and watch it. Okay. Well, this is my uh, track safety standards code of federal regulations, a little book. So uh, one thing that uh, a lot of people are going to want to know is, is ultrasonic rail testing required by the Code of Federal Regulations? Well, the answer to that is yes and no. Okay. Um, so here we have the inspection of the rail. This is what it says about it. Okay. And uh, a continuous search for internal defects shall be made of all rail in classes four through five track and class three track over which passenger trains operate at least. Stand to go. Stand to go. That's a train. Uh, give me a warning uh, there, but uh, at least once every 40 million gross tons or once a year, whichever interval is shorter on class three track over which passenger trains do not operate. Such a search shall be made at least once every 30 million gross tons or once a year, whichever interval is longer. So, uh, you know, this addresses classes three through five track uh, we have class two track here as you guys know so the code of federal regulations does not require us uh, to perform an annual ultrasonic rail inspection um, however we since 19 the mid 1990s i'm going to say 96 97 we have gotten uh rail testers in here uh tr and most of the times we've got them in here twice a year that's a really good practice for us to have and uh we've gotten sperry herzog and nordco in uh it's not always easy to get them in uh, there, especially now, there the the, rail, the there's a shortage of workers out there, and the demand for uh, the rail testing is incredible. My uh, good friend Ezekiel is a uh, chief operating officer for Sperry, and uh, he gave me this book. He came and visited here. I had had uh, an, an old book, an old Sperry book here. Let's see if I can find it. And I've had it for a lot of years. But he, he came visited me there uh, this year and brought me this updated copy. It's really cool. And Ezekiel has a real nice uh, channel over there on YouTube. I'll put a link in the description so you can go watch his. This is the old book that I've had for a lot of years. The new book, ha, it's got a lot more pictures in it and more information. So where was I at? Also, uh, yeah. The problem with us is we're a small railroad, and uh, Herzog won't even come in here anymore unless it's 20000 or more. Uh, we get Sperry or Nordco if they happen to be in the area and can give us a little a day's time. Then we'll happen to get them. The last time we had Ultra Tracks come in, it's Canadian, and it was actually uh, the first time they were ever here. So we uh, do have a very good rail testing program. I wanted to tell you the history. 
um, as early as, probably can't read that, but all, as early as 1877, a patent was filed for a mode of defecting, detecting defects in railroad rails. And then in 1915, the uh, Bureau of Standards began a series of experiments. And then in 1923, this gentleman here got involved, Dr. Elmer Sperry. And uh, he pretty much, over the years, developed the uh, ultrasonic rail testing methods that they use now. Okay, stay tuned. We've got a lot more to come. Okay. So what you're going to have to understand here, there's three planes in a rail. The uh, transverse plane, the vertical plane, and the horizontal plane. So your transverse plane would be here in your railhead, looking at it like that. That's your transverse plane. All right? So that's what we're going to need to know today. Then your vertical plane is straight up and down and your horizontal plane is through here okay so uh here's a picture of that okay here is a picture of it's called a fracturometer all right this is in the sperry book and this was not in my original book that i had so uh we're looking at 30 percent that would be number three 30 percent and right here is your ring for 30 percent okay and uh like i said these uh defects can have all kind of different sizes uh we only talked about the uh 30 percent in the last video and in uh right here in that picture i showed you okay more to come hold on now this is a uh, nordco this is what the nordco operators carry with them uh nordco rail Law Identification Handbook. Well, there's uh, actually four books that I carry with me in my lunchbox all the time. This is one of them, my Track Safety Standards book that I showed you, my Sperry book, and uh, my Red Book of Track Requirements that my good friend Steve McCarthy gave me. Uh, link in the description. I showed you this in the last video. Link in the description to watch his ch cool channel. Uh, this is from Canadian Pacific. All right, but uh, we'll uh, look over here. Be right back till I find the page. Okay, we're back. This is the uh, rail defect abbreviations that ultrasonic rail testers use, and there's quite a few of them. And I'm not we're not going to go through all of them today. But uh, I wanted to talk to you about the T D D, and that's uh, that's designation for detail fractures okay now let's uh, go back to our sperry book here that is uh over here and uh, when they mark that as a tdd then these are all the defects that that heading encapsulates or these are all the defects that goes underneath that heading if that's a better way of saying it but they'll mark it as a tdd they won't mark it as a transverse fissure or a compound fissure they'll mark it as a tdd all right so that includes transverse and compound fissures detail fracture from shelling reverse detail fracture detail fracture from head check an engine burn fracture a welded burn fracture a transverse defect from spalling and a transverse defect from electrode burn. Okay, so a TDD could in, would encompass all of those. All right, let's go. Uh, then uh, it says, says, says right here that uh, a transverse defect is any progressive fracture which occurs in the head of a rail and has a transverse separation however slight. This general classification is made when the defect is found in track. That was when what your uh, testers would 
That's what it's talking about there. After the rail is broken for examination, the transverse defect can be I accurately identified as one of the following. And obviously the testers don't break the rail. They just mark it as a TDD, give you a percentage, and tell you to fix it. All right. <laughs> Let's go look at that. Okay, different day here. They got problems up here trying to link their locomotives up. I'm waiting to see if the, the remotes on the locomotives to get them linked up. I'm waiting for the train to leave so I can get on track. So anyway, I wanted to uh, talk to you more here about ultrasonic rail testing, how it works. <laughs> um, it's going to be a real simple explanation. But uh, when, when the uh, testers go out, they'll put down a put their basket down with the wheel uh, sensors on them and uh, actually they're called transducers they send an ultrasonic wave down into the rail there's a layer of they spray the rail with a thin layer of water that's called a couplant c-o-u-p-l-a-n-t and uh, the ultrasonic wave goes down into the rail when that ultrasonic wave hits a defect down in that rail then that will send back a reflective wave and that gets picked up and they know there is a defect there so then they will stop the truck get out with a handheld unit and make a closer inspection with the handheld unit now um, here is uh, something else they have different beam angles on these all right so a 70 degree beam angle would pick up these defects. All right. And uh, I'm not going to go through all of these, but you get a picture of uh, what, uh, how that works a little bit. And they have some more over here. I'm going to make this, uh, like I said, I'm going to make this a little pretty simple, not get into a very big technical discussion about this, because I'm not setting myself up as, <laughs> as an expert on how exactly this works, but uh, you get a good picture of that. All right, uh, we are going, I'm going to show you here next a picture of what Ultra Tracks found for that uh, defect up there at milepost 1.66 so you can see what the uh, the uh, operator sees on his screen all right so we'll show you that picture and after that picture then we're gonna uh, finish this up and I will show you the uh, actual testing report that they emailed us okay hope you're enjoying today's show I might also add in here before I show you that picture uh, the uh, ultrasonic rail testing operates at a range above 20,000 Hertz our uh, human ears are incapable of hearing anything above 20,000 Hertz it's uh, and the, what's what's interesting we just throw this in. this is pretty interesting it works pretty much on the same principle as echolocation in uh, bats and dolphins they send out a signal and you know if that bat if that signal hits a mosquito out there Hello, it gets a reflective wave back okay, to the uh, bat Buddy, and it can pick it up that? and the dolphins I use got, uh, water Is your belt back on? as uh, yeah, their sure. medium <laughs> as you know and, and I've, I've read that uh, the echolocation uh, waves from bats and dolphins are somewhere around a hundred thousand Hertz now that's pretty cool stuff <laughs> alrighty here's the uh, report that I wanted to show you from ultra tracks and uh, up here report number the operator I scratched that out because you don't need to know his name and it shows the temperature and the atmospheric conditions and over here 
railroad. Uh, we contracted through Frontier Railroad for Ultra Tracks, so that's why they put that on there. And the Irons Energy is uh, our mine. Actually, it's Cumberland mine, but that's what they put on here. So here's uh, here's the defects. And we had all these defects when they came. This is the size. I don't think it's turning out too good. But anyway, this is the one we were looking at here, the TDD at uh, 30%. All of these have been corrected, by the way. Uh, the mile post, that one's at 1 1.66. And the side it was on was the right side. Here's the latitude and longitude of that point. The GPS satellite and the satellite quality. Now, I, I, I don't know a whole lot about it, but the way I understand that the GPS bounces off of several satellites. Why the different abbreviations in here? Uh, again, I'm not the one to talk to about that. Uh, <laughs> and the time, the GPS time, the rail weight, which is 132, and the manufacturer's date, they did not actually get out and check any of them. The 1975 is my writing in there. So they just put 1900, and they also goofed up over here, and this really had me confused. Manufacturer's code, and I had to... Uh, it's A.L. Algoma, and that for everyone. Well, I talked to my friend Ezekiel, and again, Ezekiel does not work for After Tracks. He works for Sperry, but that's what he told me, that, uh, that since this is a Canadian company, the Algoma is a steel mill in Canada, and they just did, the testers that came here just did not get out and uh, check the rail, as you can see from the dates or they would have put Steelton over here, or whatever rail it was. Okay, alrighty. Now uh, let's look at this. Your TDDs. I told talk to you about that. The VSH stands for a vertical split head, and uh, the let's see if you can get that. HWJ is a head and web separation. And I'm going to show you a picture of that right now. Then we go on down here, another HWJ, HWJ, the B H. J is a bolt hole break joint area. Okay, there you have it. A uh, ultrasonic um, testing report. They emailed this to us. They actually take it back. Uh, their recordings, they record it, take it back to the office. And a guy in the office runs through the whole track again. And uh, then uh, <laughs> to make sure they didn't miss anything. And then they will uh, email us the report. So, <laughs> all right, we're here at home uh, doing this. So, uh, if you guys have been here before, I wanted to thank you uh, very much for tuning in and watching the show. I hope, I hope it's been uh, educational. I'm trying to keep the glare out of my glasses. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, ho I hope you've uh, enjoyed today's show. And we really, really do appreciate you uh, stopping by and watching today. Happy rails to you. Until we meet again, my friend.